Welcome back again. This Man United Inside News. Manchester United. Mike Phelan discusses working with Sir Alex Ferguson, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Ralph Rangnick, and Eric Ten Hag's progress. Former Manchester United assistant manager Mike Phelan speaks exclusively to Sky Sports. The 60-year-old worked under Sir Alex Ferguson, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and Ralph Ragnick. Phelan gives his lowdown on Harry Maguire, Cristiano Ronaldo, Gary Neville, and Eric Ten Hag. In an exclusive interview with Sky Sports, former Manchester United assistant manager Mike Phelan has lifted the lid on the standards set by Sir Alex Ferguson and looks at the work still to be done by Eric Ten Hag. Phelan was a long-standing figure on the Manchester United bench as assistant manager to Sir Alex before rejoining Old Trafford to work under Ola Gunnar Solskjaer and Ralph Rangnick. In a lengthy interview with Sky Sports, Phelan also speaks about working with Harry Maguire, Cristiano Ronaldo, and Gary Neville. The 60-year-old gave insight into the dressing room environment during Sir Alex's trophy-laden reign at the club, and how players such as Wayne Rooney and Rio Ferdinand settled into the group after joining from other clubs. The beauty at United was there was a high standard there, he says, and that standard was high. It wasn't just the standards that the manager put in place, or the coaching staff, but the ones that the players put in place. It was a case of, if you want to be here, you accept this, and you keep the standard high, and you take that on, and you challenge it a lot more. As coaches, we were there to improve the players. Yes, they are top, top players. But you're not looking for massive improvement. You're looking at a bit of improvement. And if you get it from them all, then that's a huge improvement. So when you challenge with Ronaldo and Rooney, they are pretty decent individuals in their own right. Yes, they have egos. But ultimately, they want to succeed and they want the legacy. You have to be there for them. And that was easy for me. It's about relaying those messages to them. Keep your head down. Do your work. You're a good player. That's why you're there. And it will all come together. Another key factor in the standards across Phelan's two spells at Manchester United was the impact of Ronaldo, with the former assistant revealing that, during the Portuguese forward's return to Old Trafford, he lost some players due to the standards he asked for in training. The second time round, he came in a lot older and a lot more opinionated, strong-willed, Phelan added. He still had massively high standards and was terrific to work with but I'd probably say a tougher mindset. He had been at Manatee. He had been Portugal's ever-present. He had been at Madrid. I liked it because he didn't want his standards to drop. He wanted other people's standards to come up. And sometimes you lose a few people along the way when that happens. I remember certain times when he pushed and pushed hard, and he didn't get much reaction or much response. And there was frustration. When you deal with top, top people, it's about them and where they can finish and where they can get to. They want to look back and go, wow, that was successful. And he probably realized, and I don't know as I never had that conversation with him, that he couldn't do it at Manchester United. So his challenges were elsewhere. He's still playing international football. Yes, he's in Saudi Arabia, but he's still playing and scoring goals. He is doing all the things we knew he could do at Manchester United. But a really good personality hard-working and challenging. He challenged me as a coach, Carlos K. Rose as a coach, and Sir Alex as a manager. But that's good because it takes you to another level. Feeling on Ronaldo, the first time. The challenging part was that Cristiano came to Manchester United knowing in his own mind that he was going to be the best in the world. He had one ball under his hand and the team had another. And this was a young kid, one who came from Portugal and was made there, and made that sacrifice to come away from that, where he was comfortable, to a club like Manchester United and learn everything from an English and British perspective. He had all the skill set, the mentality. But what we tried to do with former assistant manager Carlos Queiroz was we tried to integrate him into the team, and he responded brilliantly. His work ethic and practice was fantastic, and it rubbed off on the players. They knew there was someone special there. In that environment, with the standards so high, the players knew this guy could take them where they needed to go and to go again. He did that brilliantly.
again and again. Man United fans left speechless as Eric Ten Hag makes decision on forgotten Everton flop. Manchester United had been linked with a move for former Everton man Anwar El Ghazi, sparking concern among fans. But Eric Ten Hag has opted against pursuing the move. Manchester United fans have been left stunned with links to free agent Anwar El Ghazi, but the club will not be pursuing a move after all. The winger is on the market having left Dutch side PSV last week, and Eric Ten Hag had been looking for a short-term solution as the accusations leveled at Antony mean he has been given a leave of absence, although he denies the claims against him. El Ghazi is well known to Premier League viewers having first played for Aston Villa before heading to Everton. His impact at Goodison Park was minimal, but the Daily Mail reports a swoop could be on the cards. That has not gone down well with United fans given that replacements for Antony are already at the club, but the Athletic claimed that after a proposal was lodged by El Ghazi's agent, they have opted against the move. Prior to that, though, there were fears among the old Trafford faithful that the Egyptian could be coming through the door. One fan hammered director of football, John Murto, for the move, stating, Another Murto madness, some director of football taking us in the direction of wall-to-wall Eredivisie garbage. Another added, United are so desperate they're going for an Egyptian winger, hoping maybe he comes out half as good as Mo Salah. Ten Hag has been more than willing to dip into the Eredivisie market for talent, adding the likes of Antony, Lissandro Martinez, and Tyrell Malaysia since taking over. For now, though, with his Brazilian winger absent, there are other options he can explore. One of those is Jaden Sancho, although the winger finds himself in hot water at Carrington. He publicly hit back at Ten Hag after the Dutchman explained his reasons for dropping Sancho for the loss at Arsenal with the pair set for showdown talks. Youngster Facundo Palistri, who has been used sporadically at best during his time in Manchester, but he was kept at the club with a view to using him more regularly, and Antony's absence could open that door. Alejandro Garnacho has also been given minutes, and he remains an option. Again and again, let's talk about United takeover updates. Did you know that Sir Jim Ratcliffe makes Fresh Man United take over admission? Yes, Manchester United's owners, the Glazers, are currently contemplating offers presented by Sir Jim Ratcliffe and Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani. So Ineos founder Sir Jim Ratcliffe has admitted failure in the Man United takeover process, which is not an option for him, as he awaits news on the sale. Ratcliffe is one of the two frontrunners to buy the Reds after the Glazers announced in November a strategic review. At the time, this review was defined as leaving all potential scenarios on the table in regards the future of the club's ownership, including the prospect of a full sale. Since the news, Ratcliffe is thought to have approached the American family with an offer for approximately 60% of United. However, he faces stiff competition from Sheikh Jassim bin Hamad Al Thani, who is proposing a 100% buyout. Both bids from Ratcliffe and Sheikh Jassim are thought to be in the pound 5 billion region. Unfortunately for United supporters, updates on the takeover process have been non-existent. But in a rare interview on Ineos TV, the 70-year-old addressed the sale. He said, The United bid would have been unthinkable two or three years ago if we hadn't had some of the experiences, some quite difficult experiences with Lausanne and Nice. You can't really contemplate acquiring a brand like Manchester United and failing because the failure is just far too public and excruciating in a deal like that. Last month, Men's Sport reported there was concerns from Sheikh Jassim about the likelihood of the Glazers selling the club. We understand as of August 18th, the Qatari banker had not received a response from the Glazers and they were just waiting for the sellers to make their mind up.